This is Dr. Shanti Basso, founder of Atrial Fibrillation Centers of America. Today, I want to talk to you about a very important question. How serious is atrial fibrillation? But I want to review first a little bit about what I talked about during the last video. Last video, we covered what the symptoms are with atrial fibrillation, which include shortness of breath, fatigue, and palpitations. Second, we covered the different types of atrial fibrillation, which include proxismal, persistent, and chronic. This is AFib that goes from on and off to all of the time. And, and then last of all, we talked about what the natural course of atrial fibrillation is. Today, I want to answer a very important question. How serious is atrial fibrillation? Atrial fibrillation can certainly make you feel miserable, but beyond making you feel miserable, it can cause debilitating issues. Atrial fibrillation can result in strokes. The top tier of the heart, when it is in atrial fibrillation, quivers like this. When it quivers like this, the blood forms clots. Those clots go to the brain and can cause strokes. There's a small segment within the left atrium. It's called left atrial appendage. This is a small outpouch within the left atrium. It looks something like this. The blood goes into the left atrial appendage, forms clots. Those clots leave the left atrial appendage, go out to the left atrium, into the left ventricle, and out to the brain and cause strokes. These strokes can be very debilitating. It can result in patients being bedbound or severely weakened. Therefore, we need to evaluate patients for blood thinners. There are a number of blood thinners we use, aspirin, Plavix, Xeralto, Verdexa, Eliquis, Coumadin. Wow, that's a mouthful. These are the tools we as electrophysiologists have to prevent strokes. There also are non-pharmacological treatments for prevention of strokes associated with atrial fibrillation. There are some procedures that we can do for, for patients to prevent strokes that do not require us putting them on medications. The left atrial appendage looks something like this. And it is in this appendage that the blood goes in, forms clots, and those clots go to the brain and cause strokes. And in this left atrial appendage, we can deploy a umbrella-like device that sits within the left atrial appendage that occludes the left atrial appendage and prevents the blood from going in there in the first place. The other thing we can do is that we can put a rubber band around the outside of the left atrial appendage called the lariat and prevent the blood from going into this pouch in the first place as well. So there are pharmacological treatments, there are non-pharmacological treatments as well. And your doctor needs to evaluate which one is the most appropriate one for you based on your medical condition, your risk profile, your age, and so many other factors. Now, atrial fibrillation can also cause other problems. When the top tier of the heart is quivering like this, you lose 20% of your blood flow. That's a critical 20%. That, that blood is important because it provides oxygen to the rest of your organs. When the top tier of the heart is quivering like this, it can result in your heart racing. That heart racing can weaken your heart that weakened heart can cause trouble with the rest of your organs as well. So we worry about both heart rate and also blood thinners for patients who have atrial fibrillation. As you can see, atrial fibrillation is a pretty serious issue and, that, and that's why we treat it from many different angles. That's all for now. This is Dr. Shanti Bansal from Atrial Fibrillation Centers of America. Go to our website at afibamerica.com. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much.